Hey everyone, it's Spencer, and today we're going to be painting up one of the Space Marine Terminators. You can get these in the Leviathan box sets or the upcoming starter box sets. We're painting up in an Ultramarine scheme with lots of rust and grime, as usual. And you can see here we've got some highlights here as well, like some volumetric highlights. You can see on the left hand side of this model, there's highlights and some right hand side shadows. The model we've got here is the other way around, so we're going to have the highlights on the right hand side and the shadows on the left. And you see here we've got the head off, you don't have to have that head off, it's just going to be easier to airbrush it in a mim. So we're going to start with Vallejo Game Air Ultramarines Blue, we're just going to give the model a coat of that all over. If you're smart about this, you can make the shadows even darker, but still have a little bit of blue. If you just give them a really light dusting with this paint. So you end up with some nice darker blues in the shadow just by letting the transparency of the paint do some work for you. You want to try and get a mostly solid coat over the rest of the model outside of the shadows. After that, we're going to use Vallejo Game Air Magic Blue. And now we're going to start really defining the highlights. So we're going to paint basically a column of light over that front leg and going up the chest onto the face area, including the shoulder pad on that side. And then after that, we're going to really sharpen up those highlights with Vallejo Game Air Electric Blue. And I'm just going to paint a very thin highlight along that line of that column. You can see here, as I'm turning the model around, you can see those areas of light to dark to light to dark. So we've got that nice shadow and highlights. For the helmet, um, you don't have to do this. You can paint it by hand using the paints that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but yeah, if you want to airbrush the helmet, then you use Vallejo's Stonewall Grey as your base coat. And then just use some white from above. I use MIG Matte White because it comes out really nicely out of the airbrush with just a drop of thinner. After that, you can apply your transfers. I use Micro Sol to uh, put the transfer onto the model and then micro set to make it stick to the model better. Once we've done that, we're going to block in the black areas, so any of the armor joints or the exhaust vents on the back and the gun casing. And we're just going to be using Vallejo model color black because it's like a really nice matte black color and it covers really, really well. Once we've done that, we're going to paint in the white areas. So if you didn't airbrush the helmet, you can use this method here. So we're using Administratum Gray from Citadel. I'm just going to base coat that over all the areas. Then give them all a wash with Citadel Null Oil. Once that's dry, we're going to highlight them with Administratum Grey. I didn't wait for it to dry, so yeah, bad me. But yeah, wait till it dries and then highlight all those areas with Administratum Grey. And if you want to, you can just aim at hitting the like upward facing parts of those. And then final little highlight with whites, just on the tips of the top of the area facing the, you know, the light, really. Once we've done all that, we're going to seal the model in and give it a nice finish with some Ultra Matte Varnish from MIG. I'm using this straight from the bottle into the airbrush and it comes out really nicely and it's a really, really matte finish. Then we're going to paint in the metallics, so we use Retributor Armor on the Aquila and any little decorations he might have, so he's got a skull on his right hand and he's got like a little skull and wing on the gun, so we're going to paint it in with that. For the metallics, we're going to paint in with Lead Belcher. Then it's Agrax Earthshade, wash over the golds. And all normal wash over all the other metallics. Now for the most fun part, we're going to panel line the model. So here we're going to use a liner brush from MIG, dip it in some enamel thinner, then we're going to take the black wash, which is one of the enamel washes, and you load up the brush, and you literally just have to touch this to any recesses, and the paint will flow from the brush magically into all those recesses and add some amazing definition to your model. This is like the most satisfying part of this whole paint job. If you enjoyed my videos, I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel and give them a like and turn on the notifications. It really, really does help channels like mine to grow. If you want to support them even further, I do have a Patreon where you'll get early access to videos. You can get things like your name shouted out. So in this video, thank you very much to William Culverwell as he subscribed to the £8 and up tier. So thank you, William. It's really, really appreciated. There's a lot of other different benefits on there. Like you can get monthly reviews of your model or even one-to-one -one tuition if you subscribe to that tier. I really appreciate if you can check it out. But if not, that is also fine. I appreciate times are hard for a lot of people. Back to the video. So now we're going to paint up the rust on the model. So we're going to start with Rhinox Hide. I love this color. It's a really, really nice brown. 
and we're going to paint it onto the model. Try to think of a metal sheet with paint on it. And when you see the rust, it always chips away from like the edges. So try and think of that as where you place the rust. You can see here it's like around the edges. Um, yeah, it's like chips away at corners and places where it would wear. Once we've done that, I'm just going to go around the model and give it bits of rust here and there. And then we're going to go with Scrag Brown. I haven't got any Scrag Brown for some reason. I don't know where the pot's gone. But I've made my own with some Troll Slayer Orange and Rhinus Hide. So if you haven't got Scrag Brown, you can mix those two together and it's basically the same thing. I'm just going to paint that inside of the rust that we've previously painted. Amazing camera whip from me here, but all we're doing now is going in with the Troll Slayer Orange straight away into those those rust spots and just giving it a little bit more variety in the rust. For the purity seals, we're also going to base coat those with Rhinox Hide and then highlight them with Bane Blade Brown. For the other parts of Purity Seals, the wax parts, we're going to use Pink Horror, base coat them in that. And then wash them in Carabid Crimson. We're going to use some mixed streaking grime and we're going to add some extra grime to the model. So all I've done here is taken some of the grime out of the top of the bottle with a cotton bud. We're just dabbing it onto the model. It's quite diluted here, so we're not aiming for like a whole coat over the model to reduce it down like in some of my other videos. All we're doing is add it on top. If you get a little bit too much, just roll the cotton bud across it. It's still the damp side of it. And it's just gonna leave some like nice little grimy residue across the model. Nothing too like intense though. Onto the eyes, we're gonna start by painting them black. Then we're going to use Citadel Corn Red and we're going to paint the centre of the eye lens. So basically all of the eye lens just leave a little bit of black around the outside. If you make a mistake at this stage, it's not the end of the world. You can just go back and clean it up. If you're really quick, you can just dump your brush and go over and erase the paint you've just put on the model. Then we're going to highlight the centre of the eye lens with Mephiston Red. So we're just painting inside that area that we've just painted with Corn Red. I'm going to get a bit finer with the highlights now, so we're going to use Troll Slayer Orange and paint it inside that Mephiston Red section. And then finally we're going to use Aerial Yellow and we're going to paint inside that Troll Slayer Orange section. Onto the basing, and this is very similar to my Blood Angels video that's just come out last week. But we're going to use Vallejo European Mud, Thick Mud, whatever it's called. This mud, paint it on the base put it on the base, whatever, get it on the base and on the feet of the model. Do that, it's really nice stuff. Then once we've done that, we're gonna take some charred cork from Rival Craft. And I think this is literally just like cork that's been charred. We just put a couple of bits on the base, it just adds for like some nice rocks. We're gonna add some tufts too. I think these are Deadlands tufts from Rival Craft. I can't remember the name of the color, but they do such a wide variety of tufts there. Let's check it out. Then dip the whole base into some base scatter from Rival Craft. Uh, this is the Arid Earth one. Um, it's just like some nice earthy colored rocks. Then to the really fun part, we're gonna take dark mud, dark mud from MIG, and I'm just gonna splodge this onto the base and lower legs. You want to aim for like half of it, but like randomly splattered around the base. And then the second part of this is we're going to take fresh mud, again from MIG, and splatter the other half of the base. So the parts that you haven't already just done with the dark mud, do it with the fresh mud. And what this is going to do is they're going to blend together really nicely and into the colours underneath. Um, yeah, it's just going to come out like a really nice blend of muddy tones. You don't have to do any more than that really, you can just leave it as that as it is and it would look really nice. But I like to add some Kursk soil which is like a, this yellowy mud colour and it just adds some variety to the base. Once we've done that there's only one thing left to do and that is paint the base rim black. I really hope you've enjoyed the video guys, I'm really enjoying making these longer form videos again. If you are please give it a like and share it and subscribe to the channel. It means so much if you do, uh, honestly I can't describe how much it means. If you have got the means to, obviously subscribing to Patreon would be absolutely amazing, um, but I understand that times are hard for people, so you know, if you can't do that, that's perfectly understandable and you know, just watching the video means a lot to me anyway. So thank you very much for being here and watching the video, seeing what I do, and taking an interest. It, it, 
I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Thanks very much everyone. Bye.